Hello everyone, my name is Aileen Downs from the Studio for Art and Craft and today we are going to be doing the Pinwheel Dot Mandala Plate. So this is what it's supposed to look like after it's been finished um, and this is what it is going to look like before you get started. So before we start putting some dots on our plate, um, let's just talk a little bit about what comes with your kit. So you're going to get the finished photo, you're going to get your plate, you're going to get your paint strip. So this is what my paint strip looks like with all of my labels on my lids of my paints with their color numbers and letters. Um, and then you're also going to get a paper towel for drying your your dot tool and then you're also going to have to purchase a dotting gyre so this dotting gyre has eight different spokes and each spoke is a different sized dot so we're going to be using the labels one through eight on the dotting gyre for you to understand which dot size we are going to be using for each dot design that we do today so there's two different dotting methods, or actually there's a few different dotting methods that I want us to cover real quick before we get started. So I'm just going to move this over. We're gonna start with my tile here. And first things first, I'm gonna start with um, tip number one. We're gonna go through what dot dot dotting is. So when I dot dot dot, I'm gonna dip my tip into my color. And then I am going to very simply dot dot dot. So what you'll notice when you dot 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 is that each dot gets consecutively smaller than the last and that is a big part of this project today. Another um, technique that we're going to be using is the dip and dot method. So I'm going to dip into my paint and dot, dip and dot, dip and dot. And you're going to notice that each dot is consecutively the same size. And that is what we want with the dot 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 method. Another word you're going to hear me use is the word triangulate. So if I were to triangulate a pink dot between these blue dots, this is what I mean by that. I want to create a triangle out of these two dots by adding one dot above and in between them. Now you can see that triangle and I can triangulate again with these two dots like that. So you're gonna hear me use the word triangulate, you're gonna hear me use the word dot, 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 you're gonna hear me use the terms dip and dot. And then the last thing that I wanna go over, I'm gonna do one big dot of a blue and the last thing is tear dropping. So when we tear drop, Let's say that I want to start with tip number four. So I'm going to start with tip four and then this is tear dropping. So I'm going to dot, dot, dot to one side and you're going to notice that each dot gets smaller and then I'm not going to stick with tip four. I'm going to switch to tip three, dip the same color into tip three and then on the other side of this dot, that is where I'm going to dot, dot, dot again to create a teardrop effect around that dot. So you'll notice that these are all of the techniques that we are going to need for this project today. We don't need that anymore. We can really oops, bring back our plate now and get started. So to begin, I am going to start with tip number eight and color number 42 or um, letter number A. So I'm going to use the letters here um, just because it's easier for me. But 42 is A, 34 is B, I've got 36 for C, 28 for D, and 1 for E. So we're starting strong with tip 8, the largest tip into 42, right into the center. A nice big one. Now you'll notice that I'm trying to get a bunch of this paint off of my gyre, so I'm kind of letting it sit there for a second. If you notice that the circle shape is not staying completely solid and smooth, you just might want to grab a little bit more paint and 
let it settle into that space. So then I'm going to wipe my gyre. That's what my paper towel's for. And then I'm moving on to tip number five. Which way is that? Over here. And I'm switching to color number 34 or B. And I'm going to dip that. And then at the end of each of these rays that you see, that's where I am going to be adding my color number 34 with tip number five. Right at the end of each of these rays. Now you're going to notice that between each dotting, I am dipping. So this is dipping and dotting because I want to keep the sizing of these dots completely consistent. So I'm dipping and dotting here. Just like that. Then the next thing that you're going to want to do is with tip number three, you are going to dip into color A or 42. And then we are going to be adding a dot above and in between. So we're triangulating already. Here we are. I know. above this middle dot and between these um, ray dots that we've got going on here. So we're just triangulating with these dots and I'm dipping and dotting. And it's okay if they're not perfect. And the only other thing that I do want to mention at this stage is if you notice that one of your dots maybe starts to touch another dot or gets too close to that dot or you just don't like it and you want to move it. Now you can spend a whole lot of time trying to get that wet paint or wet glaze off of your piece or you can just let it dry and lower your risk of ruining everything else that you've already done by just letting it dry, leaving it. I know it can be annoying if it looks really weird at the time, but if you let it dry, then you can pick it off without disturbing the base color that we have on the plate already um, because the glaze will come off in like almost a powdery form if you just let it dry first with like a toothpick or something like that. So that's all that I had to say about that. Now we are going to move into tip number two. And again, we are going to be triangulating, but this time we're triangulating above our dots of 34 or color B. And we're using color A again, or 42 is what I'm using. So to show you what I mean, right between those dots of 34 and a little bit above is where I'm adding these dots of 42. And then with the same color, A, or 42, I'm going into tip one. And now in between these dots of 34 is where I'm going to add my tip one dot of 42. Now my plate is actually on a turntable. And if you have anything like this, then I would recommend it because especially once we get to the teardrops, you're going to see me using my turntable a lot. And what it's really useful for is just making sure that your hand can stay in the same place for every dot. Because the way that your hand is positioned will affect the placement of every dot that we put down. 
every dot that we dot. Now we're moving on to a new row around. We're gonna actually start again with tip eight. And now we are moving on to color C or 36 with tip eight right above the dot of 34 along the rays is where we are going to be adding our new dot. But we wanna make sure to leave some space. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If I didn't wanna leave any space at all, I dot it here. But since I wanna leave space, I'm gonna come up a little bit because I need there to be a little bit of space between the dots of 34 and 36 for, can you guess? If you said more dots, then you were right. So adding my dots of 36. Now with tip number one and color D or 28, I am going to show you our first teardrop. So with color 28, I'm dipping in and tip two. Now I'll start over here and I'm gonna start at the very top along the ray and come down one side. So we'll do dot, dot, dot. Now I personally don't even count my dots because I know that this number of dots, you can't really tell the difference if they're different unless it's like three dots versus seven dots um, on one side versus the other. But when you go on to the next side, again, we wanna remember to switch from tip two to tip one. Now, if I was using a different tip like tip five, then I would switch to tip four. We just wanna go down one size. So, you guys can see my paints. I'll go in with tip one now into the same color and just dot, dot, dot all the way around. Now, if you notice, like me, by the time you get to that last dot, you might be running out of glaze. We don't want to just go in, let's say if I was using tip number five, I don't want you to start all the way down here with tip five still. At that point, I would rather you switch to tip one because it's a much smaller tip size and then dip back in to your paint. And I would even go over a dot that you've already done, the last dot you were able to do, and then do one more dot at the very end. So I'm just gonna keep on going with this step and you guys can follow along.
last one. All right, so there they are in all their glory. And now we are going to, using a similar technique to the teardrop, but kind of like a half teardrop. So instead of going in on the other side with the with the smaller tip size, we are going to only do one side of the teardrop. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna start with tip three, and I'm gonna go in to color E or color number one, and I'm going to start at the top, again, where I've been starting for this technique, the top of the dot or the end of the ray, and then just come down along one side in dot, dot, dotting. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna dot, dot, dot all the way down, only on that one side. And then I'm gonna come around and again, dot, 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 only on the right side. Turn my plate. And I'm just gonna keep on going. All right, so that is my half a teardrop of dots of the color number one. So next step, we're going in with tip number five and we are dipping into color A. And we are actually going to be triangulating again. This time we are triangulating the two closest larger pink dots and I'm going to triangulate that with a blue big blue dot right here right above them so tip 5 42 Is that right there Just in between and a little bit above. Right in between and a little bit above. All right, looking good. Next up, tip number two, we are going to teardrop around that dot. So show you what that means again. We're just dot, dot, dotting all the way around, switching to tip one, using the same color that the dot is and dotting all the way around. Switching back to tip two for this next dot and dot, dot, dotting all the way around. Now it's helpful to stay consistent with which side that you start on. I usually start on the right side and then go to the left side, but 
the whole point of switching the dot size is to keep them consistent either way. So if you happen to go the other way around, it's okay. I did the same thing too. Now, if it makes you feel better to count how many dots you're going around with, by all means, go right ahead. You just don't have to. If that doesn't sound like fun, then you definitely don't have to. If it's stressing you out that I'm not counting them, <laughs> you can definitely count them yourself. That is fine. And again, tip number two, this time we're just switching to color B and we're doing another teardrop around the same one. Now you're gonna notice that you're gonna hit other dots and once you do, you're not gonna go through them, you're just going to stop. All right, moving on to tip number three with the same color, doing the same thing. Tip three, I'm gonna start with color B. Back down to tip two for the other side. Same thing all the way around. Now I'm back where I started, looking good. Cleaning off the tips. Now I'm doing another half teardrop down the right side with tip four, color E or color one.
only down one side and it's the same side you'll notice um, that I went around with the same color on the pink teardrops. Now with tip six, color D or 28, we are going to, again, be triangulating a new dot between these two new blue dots, or you could even just think of it as above the original pink dot. So I'll show you what I mean by that right here. And these can be kind of nestled in there a little bit. That's okay. Cleaning off my dotting tool. Switching over to tip number two. And I am tear dropping again with color 36 or C. So again, down one side with two. Switching over to one. Two, switching over to one, and just like that. All right, wiping it off again. And then with tip three, I'm going into color D or th 28. So switching to tip three, color D, doing the same thing. Switching back to tip two, on the other side.
Okay. Now, with tip number three, going in to 42 again, so color A, I am going to start from the second white dot from our second half arch. So you'll see, I'll show you with the blue here, these white dots. This second dot is where I want to start. So all I'm doing is one dot above. Tip three, going around and doing one dot a bit above the second white dot. Okay, and then with tip five, we're going to do the same thing right above. Now that that's done, you can clean off that dotting dryer one more time. Now we're gonna go back to tear dropping. I'm gonna take tip number four and color C or 36. And I'm just gonna teardrop right back around where we were already teardropping right before we added those blue dots. And then I'm gonna just wipe off tip number three. So making sure I did all of them. And now again with tip four and 36, we are going to teardrop. back into three to go on the other side. Tip four, back into three, and this is still 36 or color C.
wiping off my dotting gyre again. Going in with tip five and color 28 or D. And we're doing the same thing. Tear dropping around. 28 likes to stick to my dotting dryer. Now at this point, when I turn, I wanna keep in mind that I'm starting, this is my fifth ring around the dot. So I'm counting all the way down all my rings and this is my fifth ring. So over here, I only have four rings because now it's getting a little confusing and I want there to be five. No, we're doing 28. Okay. Now that is five, and actually there's no reason for me to wipe it because we're doing the same thing. So count them out, there's five rings around. We are now going to be adding our last ring, um, which is going to be the same thing, tip five, color D or 28. Now this is a good time where if you notice that like me by the end of dot, 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 you've got nothing there, I would switch to tip number one, I would dip into 28 and I would dip the last, I would dip over the last dot that really worked and just keep going from there if you want bigger, deeper dots. You can also just hold it there a little bit longer and more paint will drip off, but not all of us are patient. Every time I pause, that's just me counting how many rings this thing already has. We are almost there, everyone. All right. And now, similar to what we've done in the past, I'm going to take Tip six, I'm gonna go in with color E or one or white and along just the right side, so a half teardrop around what we just did. From the top around.
Those are our half teardrops, all done. Cleaning off my dotting tool. Now with tip number five and color number 34 or letter B, I'm going to add another dot. And this dot again is going to triangulate between these two pinks right here between almost right above that blue dot that we already did. Almost right above it, but kind of to the side. All right, and now tear dropping again with tip three and color D or 28. Again, tip three, going into color D. And I'm going to dip and dot, dot, dot. Again, I'm going in with tip three to start, and then on the other side, I'm going in with tip two. That's our first teardrop. Now we're switching, same tip, tip three, but we're switching to 42. Or A. All right. Now we're doing the same thing. We're doing a 42. With tip three.
teardrop. So something like this, if you see two of your dots starting to touch, you can just leave it alone and we can pick at it with a toothpick later or in the studio, we can help you out with that as well. Now we are going to switch to tip number four and to the lighter blue 34. And we are going to do this tear dropping twice as well. Just like I said, we're doing it twice. So we'll go right back over it. Awesome, so we're done with those teardrops, and now we are going in with tip six again, and you probably could have guessed it. Color E, or white, and we're doing a half teardrop. top and you want to let those dots get real small all the way to the end Right, those are our half dots, our half teardrop dots. 
Now, last time we're gonna have to do this. We're gonna go in with tip seven and color D or 28. Now my 28 has been a little temperamental, so I'm gonna tip it over to the side to get a good amount of glaze on my tip. My tip. And here I am going to, again, from right about here, this second dot of white or this little um, indentation right here, triangulating with these two dots right here. Gonna wipe off my daughter. Now I'm gonna teardrop with tip three and color 34 or color B. So around one way with three, around this way with two. Just like that. Very familiar place we're in. All right, now wiping off my daughter. I'm gonna go in with tip four and color 42 or color A. And again, we are teardropping right around. Now, going in with the same tip, but now we're going to use color D or 28. Tips four and three.
All right. Now, wiping it off again, going in with tip five and color 36. We're gonna teardrop again. Dip back into four for the other side. Now, last but definitely not least, we're going in back with tip eight and color E or white or one. And again, just on the right side, we are dot, dot, dotting all the way down. You want to allow that dot to basically disappear at the very end. Right. Now, we are officially done with our design. Isn't it beautiful? Look at her go. Now, one optional step that I think really adds some depth. I'm going to go in with B or 36. I'm going to go in with my size 6 tip. And I'm going to actually create a double dot on that first middle big dot that we started with right here. Just going to dot right on top. Now, one thing that you want to know is if your paint is still wet, you want to double dip or double dot very, very lightly. You want to just kind of let the paint fall onto that wet dot. Now, if it's already dry, you can double dot the way that you've been dotting. Another example would be you can go in with tip one or two and go in with 36 and double dot over all of these blues right here. But yeah, that is our finished design. You can you continue double dotting with different colors as much as you please. You don't have to double dot at all if you don't want to. Um, the only thing that we do recommend is leaving the rays and all of the teardrops alone, um, just because it kind of helps to let the effect do its thing but this is the finished piece this is the finished um design once it looks like this you can let it dry fix any little mistakes or even just bring it into the studio and have us fire it or take a look if anything you know looks like you need a little bit of help with something we're always here to help you so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and have a great rest of your day bye